Welcome back to living the next like episode no of Sled Talk. Appreciate you guys tuning in, whether you are on iTunes or YouTube, wherever you may be. Welcome back. Today's guest is Bryce Meredith. What's up, Bryce? Appreciate you tuning in, dude. Thank you so much, man. I'm excited to be on a snowmobiling podcast. I didn't know when this time would come, but yeah. we're here. Hey, yeah, absolutely, man. <laughs> Glad to have you. I know we've been back and forth schedule wise, getting it figured out. But uh, so, yeah, let's jump right into it, Bryce. So I'm pulling up your Instagram bio right here and you've got a list of a few accomplishments, man. You are a pro MMA fighter, two times uh, NCAA D1 national finalist and three times all American. So talk to us a little bit about that. That's super exciting. Yeah, man. So Wrestling's been pretty much my whole life, you know, 20 years. We started when I was six, um, 26 now. Uh, nice. it's, I mean, I've, I kind of joke, I've never even had like a real job, you know. It was pretty much wrestling, into college wrestling, into post-college, which is the Olympic cycle wrestling, and now into professional fighting. And so it's been pretty much year-round, day in, day out, just grinding and freaking smacking heads with people man that's pretty much the yeah. life and <laughs> and uh for me it worked out really nice Be, well you know i just got very fortunate i had parents that you know were very that gave a lot to that sport and we traveled a sure. ton growing up and then um and then once i got to college you know then that's when i really started like you know getting the fruits of my labor i felt and I became a two-time NCAA national finalist, so I got second twice, which sucks, man. Nobody likes getting second, but uh, those two <laughs> moments, of course, are like changed my life. You know what I mean? And then sure. so, and then the other years did well too. But um, pretty much from there, just kind of made me a a big name in the wrestling world. And then as wrestling progresses, um, a lot of good wrestlers progress into fighting, just because in MMA wrestling is still king i believe it's the best base to have just because it takes so sure. long to learn how to wrestle like you can Got it. you can learn striking and everything like that in a couple of years and get pretty handy with it but wrestling it seems like it takes people a long time and um so that's what kind of rules but also i always say i don't even think it's um technique is what wrestlers have gone through through the last 20 years cutting weight um competing in high school and college because they're school sports so they you know what i mean like college College wrestling is about one of the one of the worst things that you could do. I, I almost joke about it being <laughs> kind of like a military, like basic training for four sure. years and you know seven months at a time. And grueling. Um, yeah, it really is grueling, you know, because like fighting's grueling too. And I train hard sure. in fighting and maybe even train more at times, but it's just less grueling than just like going in and just wrestling twice a day every day. So um, yeah, that's pretty much been my life on the on the wrestling and. MMA side and as of right now just want to know MMA trying to find opponents but it's hard as a high level wrestler at the sure. beginning of people's careers they don't want to take those fights um, okay. and then obviously I don't want to fight somebody that's like 10 and 0 either right so there's a little <laughs> bit of both going on but it's mostly sure. them saying no like and so it's yeah. I'm just it's been way slower than I thought it was going to be sadly and it keeps screwing up my snowmobiling gotcha. season actually because I thought I was going to fight February 11th so then I thought yep. I was going to get the rest of February to head back up to Wyoming and yep. sled. But then that fight got canceled. Um, and now I got pushed to April 8th. So I just went home for, you know, I didn't even go home. I went to Southern Colorado two weeks ago, went a couple more days. And that's pretty much a wrap on my season, which just sucks. But it's, that it's is, good. Yeah, that is sad. We'll we'll get into the snowmobile stuff here here in a second. So just, you know, and like I said, when we were before we started the podcast here, my stock of knowledge around fighting you know i have a ton of friends that are really really into it and like obsessed with it equivalent to like what yeah. i'm obsessed with snowmobiling right but so my my knowledge around it is is very limited so do you see like your future progressing into like do you have your sights set on going and entering into the ufc and going after all yeah. that or is that yeah, yeah of course so um you know i guess it all just kind of depends on like where you're at in your career and stuff but the goal is pretty much to get to four and oh five and oh 
and then and then head to the big show just because you want to okay. be ready four four and five fights actually still isn't that many most people i'll go try to get up to like 10 ish before they really start Got getting it. either noticed or where you know they feel like they're in that place but as a high level wrestler it can go a lot quicker for you which is good and bad right because like you know, I didn't. I didn't get to have an amateur career because of my high level in wrestling. So I, my first ever MMA fight, amateur professional, was with a guy that was five and six with five first round finishes and stuff. Which like, that's not very normal. Um, so mm -hmm. in one breath, it kind of sucks because you're kind of getting thrown to the wolves a little bit faster than you want to. <laughs> but then also sure. your career gets to go faster, you know, God willing, mm -hmm. with health and everything. So yeah. um, it's. I mean, it's still just kind of a crazy game. It's kind of like the Wild West still, you know, and there's a lot of there's a lot of different ways you can go about it, whether it's the UFC or Bellator or whatever, you know, whatever uh, promotion you want to go to. And those conversations just have to start coming and the money, money talks always, right? But then also, oh, yeah. um, you know, money can talk so much, but also you're kind of in this game for glory as well. And the UFC is by far the best at pushing people into into the limelight of you know espn yeah. and everything like that so sure um you just you got to see which one matters the most at that time got it understood so Am jeff so no no you're no sorry about that so jeff is oh. always he's here in the background and and from time to time he'll he'll chime in um, and he's able to, you know, observe this from a different perspective. And so he always chimes in with questions and stuff. And he is definitely more aware of fighting than what I am. And he had just asked me to ask you if you have any interest in, is it Khabib's, uh, what's yeah. His league. Eagle his FC? league? Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. Um, yeah. Yeah. One of my, uh, one of my college teammates, he's, uh, he's three and oh right now. And he's actually fighting on Eagle FC this weekend. Um, so people are starting to, you know, go to that direction and that's kind of what I mean. Like, right. Like now Eagle FC is something that is appealing to, you know, American fighters because it used to just be like overseas. So it was never really a, too much of a thing, but now with Khabib doing that, once again, money talks, contracts, right. You just got to figure mm -hmm. out what makes the most sense. Um, because also this is like the thing that I always tell people, right. So you could go sign like a I could sign a four fight deal with Bellator or Eagle FC, maybe right now, let's say, like almost like a developmental deal. And mm -hmm. what happens is after two fights, they start negotiating your next contract. So then if you have, if you start showing that you don't want to re sign a contract, then they'll kind of throw you to the wolves or not really care about you the last two fights. They don't really take care of you. Like, cause, oh, you don't want to sign back with us? Then fudge off, right? Like, get the hell out of sure. here. So you just got to be really careful. You got to have managers that hopefully have the best interest, you know, have your best interest for you. But at the end of the day, I guess we'll never know until those big checks come in or those contracts are going. And, you know, yeah, as of right now, I, I trust my management with my life, but who I get, who knows, right? Right. <laughs> People trust 100%. their parents and their parents will steal from them. So <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, this is true. Yeah, unfortunately, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What'd you say, Jeff? Okay. <laughs> Jeff wanted to know that if your if your path ever led to it, if you'd ever fight Jake Paul. Uh, so this is the thing. All right. Um, Jake We're Paul's get, big. Get Jake Paul's a here. big guy. So he's almost he's almost two hundred pounds. I fight at one thirty five. So I don't want to be oh like... That's a big difference. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to Jesus. be like one of those guys that's like so ridiculous. Like, I'll fuck him up at any way. I'll, you know what I mean? Because weight yeah. really does matter. Um, yeah. And then also, man, my my co-owner um, of No Tomorrow, the brand that, you know, we're running yep. with, him and Jake yep. Paul we'll are like really good side. buddies. Oh, okay. They, gotcha. Yeah, they're really good buddies. Like, he, he goes out there and stuff with them, you know, like, so... I, I don't have too much hate for Jake Paul, so but obviously yeah. if that bag's there, I'll I'll run that yeah, for sure. Uh -huh. I mean, what, he's yeah, that's yeah, that was kind of what Jeff was trying to key on there. Um, what's your it, just it, real? Preferably, it'd be MMA. So <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just just real quick, what's your overall you know opinion of everything that Jake Paul's doing, disrupting the the whole scene? I mean, do you I think mean, it's just one big marketing ploy or? 
I think it's him. this, okay? I think there's a couple things that are true at the same time here. He is good at boxing, and he hits like a truck, man. Like, him knocking those people out that cold is like, he's obviously hitting people hard because that shit doesn't happen sure. on accident. Like, right. it really doesn't. Um, and he does things well and stuff. And then the other thing, um, I mean, like, everybody's like, I want him to fight a real boxer, a real good boxer. But it's like he's only three fights in. It's kind of like me. Like, you know, some people will say that too. They'd be like, oh, I want you to fight this dude in the UFC. I'm like, dog, I've been in one fight. Like, it just <laughs> takes a little time. Like, yeah. in a couple of years, I'll be there. I just don't know what I'm, how the whole game's going. So, sure. um, it's just such a unique thing for Jake because he's so, it's so popular. But he's also, right. and he's good, but he also, he's not good enough to be fighting Canelo or anything like that ever. Probably ever. You know what I mean? So, sure. um, but I'm, I'm a fan of it and, you know, I think it's entertaining. I mean, we're talking about it shit. Like, that's what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's working. <laughs> yep, it that's is funny. working. Yeah, I was just, cu- I was just curious what your opinion was, especially after after Jeff had just um, brought that up. So let's yeah. let's dive, um, let's pick into your day to day, right? So take me through your training regimen. Like, what does a day in the life look like for you? Yeah. Um. So just to go an easy way to put it, man, it's pretty much two to maybe three workouts a day, um, about two hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon, and then an hour of something else, maybe early morning or after, uh, like late in the night, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. Some people will, I don't know, man, some people will sit there and tell you like, I'm at the gym for like eight hours a day, nine hours a day. And I just don't know what they're doing if they're that (laughs) that long, you know what I mean? Like they're just, like they're talking, they're like, they're doing a lot of other shit that doesn't need to be done, I believe, because I mean, we all know it, man. Like you can only you can only put output, especially in high intensity fighting, wrestling, uh, jujitsu. Jujitsu you can do a lot longer because it's a little bit more flowy. Um, sure. You know, sparring, all those things. Like you can only do it for so long. You know, like practices are only about an hour and a half, two hours. So I like to say twice a day, um, every day except Sunday. Sundays are my off days, and then Fridays are um, Fridays are normally like one one day. Uh, like one practice a day, just depending on what's going on. So, sure. um, yeah. And, and then the cool thing about MMA, which I, which I enjoy is like every practice you're doing something slightly different, you know, like you wake up, you're either doing jujitsu and then in the afternoon you're doing striking. And then the next morning you're doing striking, then the afternoon you're wrestling and then you're sparring. And then, so it kind of changes a lot where wrestling, that is not the case at all. It is like wrestling every day. So, yeah. um, it's pretty easy to get like mentally just burn the hell out in like college wrestling when you're doing it for four or five hours a day, every day, just the same shit. So understandably. Sure. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, and so, okay. So let's talk a little bit about this brand that you co-own, correct? Yeah. No, yeah. We're just, yep. we're just getting started no. on it and stuff as well too. So, so this we're uh, for everybody listening right now, watching, we're talking about your brand. No tomorrow. Correct. Yep. Yeah. So I checked it out on Instagram. It's pretty sick. We'll put a link in the description. You guys check it out as well. Um, talk to me a little bit about that. What, how did that all kind of start? What's the you know mission behind it? Like, where are you guys at with it? Let's go into that. Yeah. Yeah. So we, uh, me and my buddy, Johnny DeJulia started it and we're actually doing a little podcast off of it now. Kind of like you said, we got, we got four podcasts in the bank. We're just getting ready to Let's get go. going, you know, and Hell need somebody yeah. to help us with a little bit of like, you know, I need my Jeff, right? Like, Hell because yeah. I just, yeah, I need my Jeff on my side. Cause I'm just not that good with it, obviously. Sure. But, um, uh, so yeah, so like no tomorrow is pretty much just this idea, right? Like, of course the name no tomorrow. Um, but we don't mean that like in a way that like don't have any regards about what's coming tomorrow. So we still sure. want to be disciplined in today's actions. And that's mostly where I look at it too, is like, you know, there's times when you have to be disciplined and doing shit that you don't want to do so that you can have a better life. But then there's also times Love where that. you can leave the job that you don't like to create the life that you want. So what we're kind of doing is yep. be very present in today and make sure that what today you're doing is going to make the next today better almost. It's kind of like what I always say. Like I want my next today to be pretty awesome as well. So I can't just do drugs and fuck around all the time, right? Like you got you got to be disciplined now. Um, but yeah, mostly, man, we just, you know, trying to push people to, to quit their nine to five that they hate to do this or whatever, you know, to go buy a sled because so many people, like we always say, my dad and I said it the other day, we always say this, right? We go, 
uh, like I can't make that trip. Can't you? Or do you yeah. just not really want to and you're not going to make the work and you're not going to figure out how to get it done, right? And that's like what happens to a lot of people is they like, oh, I could never travel overseas. Yeah, you can. Just save up a little bit of more money. Don't go to the bars for two weeks and then you can go yep. overseas on a trip. So that's kind of where we're at with it. And, um, you know, preferably like, you know, what we continue to do is, uh, you know, create just an adventure lifestyle, people doing pretty dope shit, you know, start doing documentaries off that, trying to figure out people's uh, life stories, whether it's somebody snowmobiling or backcountry snow, snowboarding, you know, whatever it sure. is, like, yeah. just very, very interested in ev in everything. That's what I like to say. I'm very interested in everything. So hopefully we can do that and keep pushing it. And I, th Dude. I think it could be pretty fun. Dude, that's super. Jeff, you want to get on a plane and go to Phoenix? <laughs> Meet up with him? <laughs> Let's get it. You're, Anytime. you're in Phoenix, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. All right. Dude, that is super, super sick. Um, as you're laying out a ton of those things, like I um, felt really aligned with everything that you were talking about. So, like, you know, not to make this about me. Um, no, I actually, I want guest, to. But... I did, yeah, sometimes <laughs> I don't. Sometimes when I get on podcasts, it just becomes an interview and then I get done and I'm sure. like, I didn't even really get to talk to them. So I'll, I'm actually really interested in it as well because, um, yeah, just carry on. Go, yeah, talk your crap a little bit. No, I, I appreciate that. No, I mean, um, everything that you were you were talking about with the vision of that, you know, I really am aligned with, you know, I, I spend a lot of time, effort and energy and money into personal development um, and, you know, being present in the moment, meditation, workout, cold shower, like all those things to optimi optimize myself so that then I can optimize my business, my relationships, my spirituality, all that kind of stuff. Um, and there were so many things that you were saying were, are like in parallel for like my day to day. Um, That's and awesome. how I choose to live my life and how I run sled send and how I run all my other businesses. Like, um, and so that's super, that's super interesting. Um, I don't know, man, I just got a really good feeling when you were talking about all that kind of stuff because, well, yeah, I mean, I, isn't I, it kind of crazy, it. right? Like the odds of us even really connecting to get on this podcast are pretty slim, right? right? It's not like right. my page is super filled with snowmobiling and it's, you know, like you guys are just starting off on this podcast. So yeah. I mean, you know, let's get in the hippie woo-woo crap. It's kind of crazy how it happens, right? Dude, like the energies of things really do the align universe. and it's freaky. Absolutely. Dude, I just got chills, bro. Like I, like <laughs> dead serious, I just got chills. Because again, man, that's another, that's it. Yeah, dude, that's another really big thing um, is like the universe and everything is, you know, I mean, the math calculation that has to go into for you to even follow sleds in to then be on here and like everything in between, um, is pretty incredible. And there's an absolute freaking reason for it. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, so I, I'm super excited, um, to grow like this friendship with you and you know, it's, it can only progress from here. So like, there's a lot of stuff that I think we should stay in contact with and jam on Absolutely. outside of the podcast. Yeah, stuff I don't too. want to spend too much time on it or whatever, but sure. I, I just saw, I just saw your actual Instagram because I just followed sled oh. and then we talked yeah, yeah. through that. So I just yeah, saw yeah. it. And then I just saw the, uh, what is it? E evolve. Yeah. Or, <laughs> yeah. So what is yeah, that? Yeah. I, I, yeah. I didn't get to watch enough of it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so evolve is an in-person boot camp. So it's actually, um, it was founded by a good friend of mine named Brody Kern. Um, he owns a company called wake up wealthy. Um, and so I actually have wake up wealthy tattooed on, on my arm. I've been a part of it since the beginning. We're about three years now. And so wake up wealthy is a brotherhood that is focused on helping male entrepreneurs and business owners step up and evolve in their life. Right? So we focus on four things, mind, body, spirit, business. Um, it's a, it's a 90 day program. We've got zoom calls and it's all around business and mindset stuff. Um, and we have a huge Slack channel, huge network of a ton of brothers. Um, and, and then evolve is. Uh, our in-person event that once you become um, into the brotherhood, then you get invited to that evolve thing. Um, and so I went to evolve a one. I attended it um, myself back in March of 2020. Um, and we had it originally, we had it up in Sandpoint, Idaho. Um, we did it in seven degrees and a foot of snow running through an obstacle course and stuff It was pretty gnarly. Um, which that stuff, you know, that's home for me, right? Like I grew up in Montana, like I love the cold and the snow, so I'm building all that stuff. Um, and then I, myself, I've gone back and helped coach um, and I now run logistics for all of the Evolves. And so I literally just got back from Austin, um, not last weekend, but the weekend before we just completed Evolve 09. Um, and so what that is, it's, it's a 48 hour in-person event. 
um, where the first day is like really focused on um, physically destroying people. And so we'd run them through an obstacle course and just destroy them physically. Um, you know, you'd probably get through it without breaking a sweat, maybe perhaps. But um, we we had a guy that was uh, from San, not to go too far on a tangent here, but we had a guy that yeah. was from uh, San Diego, I think he was a MARSOC uh, Marine Special Operations team leader. Um, and he went through that and he went through the obstacle course and like didn't even break a sweat. But later on day two, like after a meditation, he was bawling his eyes out. And so it just goes to yeah. show that, oh, like, yeah. um, so it's super interesting. We break, we break uh -huh. guys down and then, and then rebuild them back up to become better men, better fathers, better business owners, better husbands, um, whatever it may be. Um, and yeah, we have, we have that event every other month. So we're doing another one here in, uh, in April. So that's what that's awesome, about. Man. So that's great. Yeah. The personal development stuff is, you know, something that's real near yeah. and dear to my heart. Yeah, and we'll, and, uh, you know, obviously we won't get in. We'll talk more about this either. Yeah, but, you know, I, I do a little bit of real estate. <laughs> it's all good. And real estate investing as well. So yep. I know I saw you yep. a real estate broker now. And so, yep. you know, we could, yeah, we could have some fun with some other stuff. Oh, man. Yeah, there's uh, yeah, there's there's plenty of room for more conversations to be had inevitably. 100%. Yeah. What part of Montana um, are you from? Uh, so I grew up outside of Missoula. Okay. Um, so it's actually a really super small town about an hour east of Missoula um, called Ovando. Uh, it's a population of 75 people. <laughs> That's where I grew up. Wowzers. Uh, yeah, real, real, Ginormous. real small. Yeah, yeah. I was actually born here in Hermiston. I moved back and forth a couple of different times. So, um, okay. but yeah, Montana is, I absolutely love Montana. Um, oh, yeah. And you, you are from Wyoming, correct? Yeah, so I'm from Cheyenne, Wyoming, which is the capital. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a, yep. like... It's a little bit bigger, obviously, for Wyoming. You know, the whole county probably closer to 100,000. So it's the biggest sure. city in Wyoming. Um, and then it just really worked out really nice because, you know, from where, where I'm from in Cheyenne and then when uh, I went to college in Laramie too. So Laramie yeah. gets you even closer to the mountains. Um, but you're like, you know, you're an hour and a half away from, um, oh, fuck. Uh -oh. Am I good? You good? Yeah, I got my you. back. Okay, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> I, like I didn't think you ever just... left. <laughs> okay, oh. perfect. No, you're um, good. So you're about yeah, an so hour from. Like, uh, yeah, about an hour, hour and a half away from like the snowies, you know, where a lot of people go up and snowmobile there. Oh, yeah. And then you're about two hours from to the other side of the mountain, which is the Sierra Nevadas, or what encampment is, you know, and that's where. So we have two really good places there. And then, of course, you can get down into Colorado at pretty much any moment uh, you want to. But Colorado is just a lot a lot more busy than Wyoming, right? So we For sure. we actually don't really ride there very often. We try to avoid it as, as much as we can just because Colorado's just got a lot more stuff that, to deal with that Wyoming doesn't. Yeah. So it's, it's yeah. nice. Oh, for sure. So how old were you the first time that you got on a sled? I mean, pretty much ever since I was a baby, right? Like I, like there's pictures of me falling asleep, you know, holding the mountain bar. <laughs> Onto like, the mountain bar. You know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Just falling asleep, doing all that kind of stuff. But, uh, I, and then I started riding pretty early when I was a kid. Um, I had a little 250 enticer. Uh, I think I pretty much started riding it by myself when I was like, you know, five years old and Heck pretty yeah. much went from then on. And, you know, from there, from, I went to the 250 enticer to the phasers. And then I rode phasers for a long time just because they're pretty user friendly. I would for, sure. for kids especially, right? And yep. then and then what? And then when I was about twelve or thirteen is when um I think that was when, yeah, two thousand two thousand seven, maybe. Cause I'm yeah, I was born in ninety five. Two thousand seven ish is when those dragons, when the first dragon came out, right? And I think oh, yeah. what is that the edge? <laughs> the edge chassis or whatever. Yeah, and um, yeah, I think so. And I feel like that's when snowmobiles for started to actually change right like it used to just be you know you're just your old rmks you're all them but i felt like when that when that dragon first came out is when you know we kind of the writing was on the wall there some building's about to get go into a new unique world but when i yeah. was only 12 man it took me up until i was about 17 i would say to actually learn how to ride one of the newer sleds right just you know the counter steering and actually knowing how to ride like we do now was just, yep. it was so hard. And when I was 12 years old, man, I weighed 75 pounds, right? Like I was a really small guy. I was really <laughs> sure. tiny. I, I yep. redid seventh grade because I was so okay. small because I wasn't going to be, I oh, okay. my should have been freshman year in high school. 
Like, so if I didn't get held back, I weighed 87 yeah. pounds. So <laughs> 87 pounds as a freshman is just ridiculous. Yeah, bro. dude. So, that's... so I redid seventh grade, but, um, and so I don't know if that I'm going to use that excuse, but like just being so small, I just felt like I couldn't figure out snowmobiling. So from like sure. 12, 13 to 17, you know, when you're kind of becoming like, I'm wanting to become a man, but every time I'd go ride, I just felt like I couldn't do it. And yeah. so I kind of felt like I was like with my mom and my sisters and stuff. Like I'm trying so hard to ride like my dad and some of the other guys and I just couldn't do it. And I was, so I was like, I don't really like snowmobiling as much. I like snowboarding because I can snowboard. Got it. Like don't have yeah, yeah. to. Right. So I kind of, I felt like I kind of like mentally didn't care about snowmobiling for a couple of years there and just kind of did it as a family. And then once I hit like Got 17 it. and I started becoming a man, or not really, but you know what I mean? A little bit stronger and a little bit bigger. <laughs> yeah, I was still a little sure. boy, but, um, yeah. and then, then once I figured out how to ride it and then from that moment on, it was like, it pretty much stole my heart again, you know, which I always loved snowmobiling, but it, it was a different kind of love. It was more like, I love this rather than my dad and my family like doing this yeah. together. Got it. So, yeah. So that was like, that was fun when that happened. But then, right, this is kind of the curse of my life. And I, I say this, you know, uh, not to be that way, but when wrestling at the highest level and being a college wrestler, college wrestling is a winter sport. So I would get sure. to go snowmobiling once over like Christmas break. And then we'd go a little bit at the end of March for the next like four years of my life. I hardly got to go. And yeah. that really, it really sucks, man. And it really breaks sure. my heart and it's, but it's, I mean, it is what it is, right? You gotta, you gotta, hopefully I'm, doing the right things now, like I said, so when I'm 35, I can be snowmobiling wherever the hell I want when I'm go. a retired fucking champ of the world, yeah. right? So, hell yeah. yeah, so, <laughs> Let's yeah, go, that's kind of like, <laughs> that's kind of like how the, uh, how it's gone, but my, my, my dad's been a big snowmobiling forever, the fam, the whole family, every Christmas, like me, my aunts, my uncles, we all go up to a cabin and then everybody just goes up for a couple of days and snowmobiles and, you know, all the little kids are out there, a five-year-old's driving and the four-year-old's getting you know on a sled behind so uh it's it's for oh, yeah. sure been in the dna and you know it's 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 you know how it is it's a fun sport oh yeah 100 percent. it's i mean dude it's an obsession that's difficult to put words into it's the only it way is I can and, describe it. <laughs> and it's such a i don't know man i was thinking about it right so we you know how we say like distance makes the heart go fond or all these things, right? Like when we don't get to do things. And I think maybe that's why the drug of snowmobiling is so, so bad in our brain is because we really only get a couple months. And totally. it's not a long season at all. And we got to spend a good amount of freaking money. Yeah. Half the time you got to, shit's breaking down. And it's like, you know, on paper, you should not like it. Like it's funny, <laughs> right? Like you're going to spend 20 grand on a new sled you're going to go for two months of the year and three of the four times you go, an a arm's going to snap or something, right? Like yep. it's such a funny, but there's something so special and unique about that, I think. And um, I think it, I don't know, maybe this is like for me, but just like the freedom in backcountry is just such an amazing, it's such an amazing feeling that people will never get a feel ever in their life. Besides maybe hiking in the backcountry, like when they're in summertime, but being sure. on a machine that's like so powerful in the freedom of, you. Know, I mean, you guys know how it is, man. You stop and you're like, there's not a human within a hundred mile radius of me. Yeah. And yep. well, there's a couple, obviously a couple people riding, sure. but you know, I think that uh, just like the eeriness of the silence and then this and that is just so, it's so unique. And that's what I'm, I'm you know, when I get rolling and trying to tell people about it, I'm just like, you, man, it's just so fun. This, this, the freedom that you can get from these machines that, you can't yeah. really get from other, other machines because like I grew up riding dirt bikes and stuff, but you know, dirt bikes, you got it. It's different compared to a snowmobile. Yeah. I, in my sure. brain anyways. Right. And like, I don't know, people like jet skiing, but jet skiing, you're on a lake. Like it's just, it doesn't feel as like unique to me, I guess yeah. as I'll stop ranting, but <laughs> no, dude, I, I was literally going to say, I think, and Jeff will probably agree here. I think you literally have hands down the best description of what it means to snowmobile out of any other guests that we've ever had. Yeah. And so I think I should quit my job and you should just hand over running, hosting the sled talk podcast. You got to <laughs> hand over, you got to hand over your sled though too. All right. Yeah. Hey, yeah. <laughs> I need I a about all that. baby. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> dude, Deal off. I all mean, right. dude, that what are you, was, uh, I mean, what are you riding right now? 
Uh, so I have um, I have a Polaris Pro RMK 850 uh, 165. Um, Did and you uh, have... not the boost? No, no, no. I it's a 21, so it was before the boost um, oh, okay. came out. Um, and so yeah, I've uh, I've done a lot of stuff to it front end. Um, I have IQS Fox shock, so intelligent quick switch. I can change the mm. compression of the shocks electronically. Um, a hood heated brake lever. I've got carbon fiber uh, skid, so the rails are all are carbon fiber aftermarket. Um, running boards, a tunnel cut, skins bumper, and then obviously the wrap and stuff. So, and then I have an aftermarket uh, aluminum tank. So instead of like ten and a half gallons, it's like nine oh. and a half gallons with a low seat for. They're doing those hop overs and sweet bow ties and stuff that I haven't mastered yeah, by I any actually, means yet. <laughs> yeah, do you like that? Um, uh, so you like your seat being lower, actually, for when you are playing on your bow ties and everything like that. But dude, I mean, it's it's insane. Like I, so I have a second sled. It's actually my fiance's, but uh, Jeff here has put more miles on it than anybody else, and so it's it's totally stock. And I'll I'll jump back on that one, and like I can't stand it because like the difference in the seat height is insane. And so, I mean, not even doing the hopovers, but just like, you know, doing like S, S turns, right. And just getting over yeah. onto the other side, like the amount of effort it takes for me on my sled to do that is insane in comparison to what it takes on a stock sled. Like it's crazy. And for me, the only downside to it is that like the seat is not meant to be sat on, like it's not comfortable, yeah. but but for me, like I never sit down anyways, like on the trail ride out or the trail ride back to the truck. Like I don't sit. I mean, if I'm sitting, then, you know, I don't know, it's just rare. And so like, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't need a super comfortable seat cause I don't sit down in the first place, but yes, it makes an absolute huge difference. Um, just moving side to side on, on the sled. Makes a lot of sense because yeah. it is, I mean, it is bro. There's a lot going on trying to hop over, you know, and it's easy to it's easy to not get on the right side of it in a good position, yeah. right? Like, yeah. like you either get yeah. over there and then you and then you lose your edge and then you're falling off the top of it because it took you that one second longer to get to that other side, and oh, yeah. that makes a lot of sense, man. I never even thought it, because I mean I'm not like a real gearhead or nothing, right? You know I don't sure. get a ride enough to do that much. Um, yeah. You know I'm on a I'm on a 2018 RMK Axis, you know 163. Okay. My dad just snow checked, yeah. so I rode his Chaos. Uh, a little nice. bit this last weekend and stuff and you know it's for i mean it's nice absolutely uh i wish he i wish he got the boost just because i've never rode a turbo sled um, no oh, dude, because fun <laughs> and yeah and it makes me i mean i didn't even want to admit that i was like i didn't want to say that <laughs> on this podcast but but i'll be honest man i've never rode a turbo sled and it pisses yeah. me off dude just yeah, because yeah. i mean i think you know most people were in this um like kind of in this train of thought as well like before you could get the four-year warranty on it you know throwing turbos on your sleds and stuff you're playing a dangerous game of oh for sure it's gonna break down and you're gonna have to pay for it you know what i mean so yep. that's why these new you know the 2022s and 2023s i feel like that it makes it way more enticing i would imagine if yeah. in my head anyways yeah, <laughs> yeah I, th I think they've dropped the i think they the boost i think they dropped down to like a two-year warranty I think I don't oh, think really? they're Already? no longer doing. Yeah, I don't think they're no longer doing the four, <laughs> the four year warranty. Um, so I think well, we, yeah, I think the I boosts mean, are down to two now. I mean, I but. I think I heard you guys talking about it a little bit too. But dude, I mean, my dad didn't get his he didn't get his twenty twenty two until like two and a half weeks ago, three weeks ago. Like he was one it of was them. Horrible, huh? man. Yeah, I know a horrible. lot of people like that. It yeah. was so sad just because, you know, I don't know. Yeah, he almost he I almost mean, said. It, keep it and then was just going to snow check the 2023 and call it good but sure it's it's hard once you already mentally have been like no I, i'm getting that sled yeah oh absolutely yeah i've got a ton of friends that were in that position um same thing a buddy that i'm actually so i'm actually headed to mccall um this weekend with this buddy and he literally just got his sled like two and a half weeks ago um and so it, it just sucks and it and it puts it i don't know it's kind of a weird position for polaris when you still have guys out there that don't even have their 2022s and they've already released the 2023s and in my opinion yeah. if that was the case for me i'd just be like screw it i mean we're already halfway through march almost like yeah i would just yeah i know another yeah, guy I that think told the dealership to just keep the 2022 like you just you guys just keep it and and he's no check the 2023 so yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that affects polaris 
Yeah, it's, I mean, and obviously, you know, everybody's kind of dealing with it just from the COVID and the, you know, sure. trying to get the chips Understand. and all that kind of stuff. But man, it really does. It puts a big damper on, because like we said, how long is our snowmobile season? It's like two and right. a half months and right. I'm, a month and a half of it. I'm not going to have my sled. Like what the hell? Yeah. Like, no, that's, good. it's no, <laughs> especially what? if it's a boost that costs 20 grand, you know, 20 grand. It's, it's crazy. Huh? It's to, crazy. They jumped swallow. up that much. Yeah, well, I think I think yeah. the twenty twenty threes are now they're pushing twenty two, twenty three thousand. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, so they've gone up even more. <laughs> what a <laughs> which you what know a, everything it costs money to freaking breathe anymore. So whatever it does, man, you can you never make, make too more much of it. money, right? This, this <laughs> yeah. is facts, hundred percent, hundred percent. So, um, so I know you had kind of mentioned it before, so and you kind of mentioned it again too. So pretty much the only areas you, that you've ridden is Wyoming and Colorado. Correct. Yep. You've never been yep. anywhere so, else. Yeah, we just do those, you know, we up go up towards like Pinedale and Horse Creek, if anybody knows where that's at, you know, up in Wyoming. And um man, it's super fun up there. It's so playful. Just you can do you can do a lot of good stuff there. And then in the Sierra Nevadas in Wyoming or encampment, whatever people want to call it, you know. Um mm -hmm. that's you know, it's closest to home for us and it's really fun because like I said, right, so two weeks ago, uh Southern Colorado, like Wolf Creek, South Pass area, uh, you yep. know, I'd, supposedly it's a really good place to snowmobile. It was really fun. Uh, it was snowed like 30 plus inches, right? And so we were like, all right, let's just do it. Let's chase the storm. You know, I'm flying into Denver, getting picked up by my dad, driving another six hours down, like, you know, putting Jeez. in this, a lot of work for this, yeah, for yeah. this shit. Because I live in Phoenix now, so it's like, <laughs> yeah. and I'm, I'm, willing to, I'm willing to make the sacrifice to get on my sled, you know? So sure. we go down. And man, I, I'm not joking. I've never seen more tracks in trees ever in my life than I did there. Really? Like, you know, normally when you start boondocking and stuff, you might cross a little bit of tracks, but most of the yeah. time people aren't all playing in the same areas and, you know, everywhere you went. I mean, I got in traffic oh. jams in the trees boondocking what? because I think, because the snow's been so shitty. So I think everybody yeah. else had the same idea we did. Like, oh, there's yeah. a 30 inch storm coming. We're coming. So like, sure. Man, it was like, it was, it made it so rough, you know, and, and most of these people have, you know, turboed sleds and you got, I mean, everybody knows how it is that rides enough. If there's too many tracks in those trees, man. You're just getting rodeoed around and, you know, you're getting oh, yeah. stuck in weird little shit. And then, you know, you're getting thrown into trees because there's just a lot of weird stuff going on. And yeah, I mean, it was still fun and we still had a really good time. Of course, you know, no bad day on a sled, but it was mayhem, dude. In the area that we were riding, it was really, uh. I don't know, man. It was really crazy because there was a lot of places where if you would go, there would just be like 50, 100 foot cliff drop offs pretty much. Like yeah. not completely Jesus. straight, but like sure, sure. if you don't know where you're going, man, you could end up <laughs> in a really bad spot because yeah. we came down off this, you know, pretty much like a waterfall and we came down and we were coming back up and we had to go, you had to go like over this log through this waterfall. So after everybody was tracking it out, it got a little bit dicey, you know what I mean? Because there was only this one way up out of this thing. Sure. While we were down there, there was a dude that was snowmobiling by himself just down Num there. Number one rule of snowmobiling, I, don't go by and, yourself. And I, and I was just like, what are you? And I was like, what are you doing? He was like, I don't know, man, just kind of riding around. And I'm like, okay, one, like you yes. should not do this. This is so dangerous for yourself. And then I'm like, two... You shouldn't do it also, which I don't mean to sound selfish, but now we have to deal with you, right? Yeah, and we weren't sure. with you. We weren't doing and, – and this dude, he was not that good of a rider either, right? Like mm -hmm. we all got our sleds out, and this dude tried like three, four different times trying to get up this. Couldn't do it. So we had to pretty much like pull this dude's sled up out the mountain for him. Oh, Lord. And it was just like, <laughs> just like little stuff like that where you're like, man, I just drove eight hours because I thought I was going to get in some good snow. Yeah. And next thing I know, I'm in a fucking carnival and oh, <laughs> like boy. running into people. So <laughs> it was Dude, that's it was quite disheartening. Unique. Yeah, I've never yeah. had anything like that. You know what I mean? Especially sure. just in Wyoming, it's you're not running into people too often when you're yeah. around there. But it was uh, it was fun. It was a good trip. Nice, nice. Yeah, Wyoming is definitely on um, my list. I've never been to Wyoming. I've just done uh, Montana, Idaho, and Oregon and Washington. <laughs> Um, yeah, what's, but, uh, so what's your Wyoming favorite? Is, uh, Montana for yeah. sure. Um, yeah. So where, so I don't know if you, do you know who like Caleb Kasturki is? 
Mm, I don't know. It, it'd probably be worth a follow on Instagram. He's probably, yeah. I don't know, arguably, like, uh, some people would agree to this. A lot of people would probably agree. Some might disagree. I don't know. But he's probably, like, the number one gnarly backcountry snowmobiler there awesome. is. And so he's yeah. he's out of Sealy Lake, which is about a half hour out of Missoula. And then where I grew up in Ovando is, like, 15 minutes, 20 minutes from Sealy. Um, and Sealy oh, Lake wow. has some of the some of the best riding area. I don't know in the country. It's up there, um, probably top five. Um, and so, like, I've ridden right outside of there, and uh, it's pretty pretty epic. Uh, Jeff and I went a yeah. couple weeks ago over to um, uh, outside of Priest Lake, up above uh, Sandpoint, Idaho, and that was that was pretty epic too. Um, but there's there's a lot of sick areas right here. I mean, within two three hours of where I live here in Oregon. Um, there's, there's a lot of really cool country over here too. So, um, yeah, I mean, anywhere. Yeah. What, um, so like, I kind of made a joke earlier, but like, what's, uh, what's the snow like in Oregon just because it's so much heavier, right? Like when I, I mean, when I snowboarded in Tahoe, which I know is not Oregon, but the snow sure. is so heavy. I couldn't believe it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I was I'm yeah. always wondering like what's snowmobiling like in that type of snow? Yeah, I mean it's 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 definitely a lot heavier, you know. Again, I've never ridden Colorado, but they always talk about sugar snow, right? Like mm-hmm. I always hear Brant talk about that and stuff, and we don't have that here. Um, it's pretty yeah. good snowpack, you know. We're super close; we're you know three four hours from the coast, um, so we get a lot of a lot of moisture. Um, by the time it gets over there to you guys, Wyoming, well, Colorado, it's dried off quite a bit. But um, For sure, I mean spring riding here is is pretty fun. Um, but how know, uh, how late get, does your season go? Do you think? I mean, so we could probably ride into April. Um, you know, there's some areas I don't know when they like close off the season. Um, but you know, yeah. we're we're not far from like Mount Hood, which they do you know snowboarding and skiing in the summer yeah. for Olympics Absolutely. and stuff, training and whatnot. So, um, so we got like Mount Adams, which is just a little bit north of there, um, up in Washington State, um, and so I think. A uh, buddy of mine, Jaden from Idaho, he came over and rode Mount Baker um, up in Washington in like June um, on his sled. Oh my so, gosh. yeah. <laughs> um, so there's That's definitely a little bit of that. Like, obviously, <laughs> you're stopping every five minutes to cool down your sled and, and whatnot. You know, you're not typically of riding course. good, fresh stuff. But I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I'll probably, so I'm going to go to McCall this weekend and then Jeff and I'll go out probably a couple more times. I'll probably put my sleds away by April 1st, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I could probably Makes extend sense. it a little bit longer, but I've got a lot of other shit that I want to do too. So we'll see. Yeah. It's tough. It's a tough one yeah. to draw. I mean, dude, I, you know, for me, like I, I don't do anything other than snowmobiling, right? Like I don't have any other hobbies. I don't ha- I do anything else for, I like travel and work. And so, like, I pour, <laughs> you know, any of my fun money into snowmobiling, and I've definitely invested a, a ton of it. And so it's definitely one of those things where, like, you know, like you said earlier, you put a, f- a shitload of money into this, and you only get a ride for three, maybe four months if you're lucky, depending on where you're at. Um, but, you know, it's just it's just one of those things. So during that time, we try to go as hard as possible and get out as much as we possibly can um, because, you know, summer sucks. <laughs> You know, I hate suck. the summer. I hate sweating. I I don't you know I don't like the heat by Fucking any means. So move I'm to always Phoenix, bro. <laughs> Come no, check I've, this summer I've out. I've been there. No thanks. I've been there. I don't it's need to horrible, go again. Man. It is no so way. bad in the summer. It's crazy. Yeah, and that, that's like that the stuff. funniest part about it is like I literally. I mean, I move here because of you know my my training and everything and my gym that I'm at. But yeah. I, you want to be here in the winter. But I'm I'm in the mindset where I'm like I want to be there i want to be in the mountains (laughs) yeah Yeah, like so i you know the thing that gives me the most anxiety probably in the world is like where do i actually want to live like as my life progresses on you know or like right now it doesn't matter but when i get older because i'm like where do i want to live because obviously living in wyoming it it is it's harsh man it's harsh cold windy the wind is horrible but then also i can do the things that i love like with snowmobiling and stuff but yeah it's funny man it's such a it's such a hard thing to figure out what how but I mean, it sounds like you guys' jobs allow you guys to, to, you know, grind, grind most of the year. And then when you guys are in wintertime, you get to take off pretty much when you need to. 
I mean, yeah, so I, you know, I've, like, been doing my own thing for, well, since, like, February of 2018. So I've, like, worked for myself since then, run a couple of different businesses, and I've always been able to just pretty much do whatever the hell I want um, as far as a schedule-wise. Um, obviously, clients and whatnot, there's demands and certain times that I have to do whatever. Um, but, yeah, and then Jeff, you know, he he's full-time doing all the videography stuff and owns Media Lab, and uh, so he can make his own schedule too. So, like, literally, I mean, we have quite a bit of workload, but, you know, if Jeff and I wanted to go ride on a Tuesday, we pretty much could for the most part. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's pretty special to have that. Dude, it, there's nothing like snowmobiling on a Tuesday. It's pretty cool. Because <laughs> no then you're missing out on all the, our, you're bypassing all the weekend warriors, and you pull up to the snow park, and it's empty. Nobody else is there. Fresh tracks, like all good so but yeah yeah that's great man that's i mean i guess kudos to you guys for right creating the life that's kind of like yeah. what that no tomorrow shit you know what i mean like 100 percent like no tomorrow stuff bro is like you know cr grind grind and do what you got to do to figure out so that you can actually live your hobbies out and do the things that make you feel the most alive because there's a lot of things in this world that you know just keep us in a pretty gray state sadly right and i'm not trying to be like uh you know too pessimistic but most of the time sure. we just kind of float through life and that's what we do so when you do find the things yeah. that really do make you feel alive man fucking attach to it and keep going with it don't don't let age become that excuse don't you know like obviously there's kids and having kids and everything that's sure. gonna always you know make things different but i don't know man one of my favorite quotes that i just heard uh recently was like um most people die at 25 but they don't get buried till they're 75 that's and facts. I'm like, wow, man, that's so true because it's hard. I mean, and I get it, man. Age happens, right? And we energy gets a little less every single year, but man, that shit is that shit is out now, man. Like you said with like the whole wellness, we can you can create. I mean, 50 is the new like 30, dude. There's 50 year olds <laughs> out there that are kicking ass, bro. Like Totally. It's incredible. 100%. Absolutely, dude. I'm so excited. That's what excited. you got to do to be um, on a sled. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, dude. There's a, there's a very serious physical demand. It's insane. Um, it is. Do you wear Do you wear like a, a whoop or any kind of like activity tracker? I do. Yeah, actually, I actually have do a whoop you? on my ankle right now. So, <laughs> oh, dude, I'm gonna have to. Yeah. I'm gonna send oh, you a link. Oh so yeah, I, I saw. I, yeah, I'll send you a link. I'll invite you. I want to see. Do you notice like a difference between like when you're you're fighting or you know training all day versus like what you're putting out there when you're riding? Is there a big difference or? So this is the thing I was the most <laughs> sad about. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes when I leave training, I fucking don't bring my like whoop charger and stuff because it's kind of now in the back of my brain. So sure. when I rode this last weekend, because. My trip was pretty crazy, man. I flew out Wednesday night. I went to Vail, snowboarded Thursday, snowboarded Friday, drove back to Denver, then drove six hours, then snowmobiled Saturday and Sunday, Jeez. then drove back to Denver, flew out at 10 o'clock at night. So, like, my days were horrible, man. And I was I was drinking beer and staying up later than I should have sure. anyways, you know? So, like, yeah. I was – my score would have been – it had to have been so bad, dude. It, but, like – and. <laughs> But I, I freaked yeah. out my charger, so I didn't even get to see oh, it, and I was so freaking sad. Cause that's I, terrible. <laughs> I, I put on some four days, man, that were tough. But yeah, yeah, I just because I mean, you know how it is. Like when it's such, such like your job, and like that's what you're doing. Sometimes like when I'm leaving to vacation, and also I know that I'm probably gonna drink and stay up late, and it kind of makes sure. me feel like a piece of shit when I wake up and my score is like 20%. And I'm like, yeah. darn it, in the red. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, super no, I, red, I feel man. You. <laughs> But, I uh, yeah, 100%. I mean, um, but yeah, snowmobiling the, I mean, you know how it is with the whoop, right? It just all depends on how long you're snowmobiling for, because it's yeah. like the duration of having your heart rate being high really changes that, right? Like, like if yeah. we go ride hard for two hours, no matter how hard you ride in those two hours, you're only going to burn so much. But if you ride sure. decently hard for six hours, like your strain is way high. <laughs> so yeah. they're kind of, yeah. I don't know, but it's fun, man. How do you like your whoop? I mean, I love it. I've, I've had a whoop for over two years and I used to have an aura ring too. And I track all my yeah. things. Right. So like, um, that, which measured that's that, which is measured gets improved. Right. So I would keep track of every single day, all of my stuff. And, um, so I've been big on, on the whoop for a while. And I think Jeff and I went out on Monday. What'd we go Monday? No. Last Friday, Jesus, get my days mixed up. And I think I <laughs> I'm burnt like yesterday. Like, yeah, sorry, no, no. 
Um, I think I burnt like 46, 4,800. Nice, dude. Yeah, we were both almost the burning five thousand calories in a day, <laughs> but That's it was awesome. just him. It was just him and I, and we were riding pretty hard. Um, you know, we didn't yeah. have anybody else with us. We actually had the whole freaking mountain to ourselves, damn near, and um, and so we were just focused on riding really, really hard. Um, yeah, and so that's interesting. I'll I'll send you a message after this and and uh, add you to the sled send whoop. So I want to keep track of, of your stats and stuff and try to keep up with sure. it. But um, well, cool, man, dude. We're almost uh, we're almost at an hour long here. So let's go ahead and wrap up, Bryce. Um, we're gonna end this episode with a sled talk question of the day, right? Like I asked you um, here before we started, uh, is there a question that you would uh, like to ask the viewers and the listeners? Mm, put um, you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, actually, this is for you too, man. Okay. All right, I don't. I I think this is. It might happen to players, riders a little bit more than Skidoo, but I'm not really sure. What do you do to make yourself better on the right side? Because mm, when I'm really side hilling stuff, right, my my left my left side, you know, obviously, I how it works. I think it, it's always easier for everybody, right? But yep. that right side, I I get fucked up easily on that right side. And sure. you know how it is, right? Like you start yep. losing yourself down the mountain again. It's going to be hard to get yourself going back. And and I was just wondering if you guys have anything that you've figured out other than just, you know, get better, I guess. But yep. <laughs> that's kind of my that's, question. That's, that's a great question. So for you guys listening and watching this, uh, post in the comment comments below. <clears throat> oh, my gosh. Sorry about that. Post in the comments below your answer on how you guys get better on the right side. And so a, a couple of different things that are going there, right? Like for some people, it feels really weird, like the, the geometry with where the throttle is. And another big factor on the right side um, is, uh, you know, on the left side of the sled, you've got the, the clutches turning, right? So you've mm -hmm. got that, that weight. Um, that rotating weight going and so when you're on the on the right side that's up in the air more and so it's really it it's a lot more challenging um in my opinion obviously in most of our opinion um yeah because of that right there's several different factors there and so what i've found um and how i get better with doing it is by doing it <laughs> yeah. that's it man like i for me is no, just like, i mean do, i kind of figured that's what it was too do yeah i mean dude do the thing and have the power right like if and and for me so like a lot of people you know for me i'm always trying to get into a position on a sled where i'm uncomfortable right whether that's mm -hmm. a super steep terrain you know real thick through the trees whatever it is because i want to challenge myself because i want to you know face fear and overcome it and become better and have the power right do the thing and have the power and so for me what i do intentionally and a lot of a handful of people don't like to do this because they're uncomfortable with it is i will intentionally go on my right side so when yeah. everybody's carving and and doing the fun on the left like i'm going right um because yeah i could i'm totally good on the left because i've ran the reps enough times um mm -hmm. i'm gonna go do this on the right because i suck at it and i want to get better it's more tricky whatever it is and so my answer to that question bryce is like i just do the thing and yep. But I, I do it intentionally, right? Like I do it in a in a low consequence area in case I do mess up and the sled goes rolling or whatever it may be. But I set myself up, up in a position where like I'm just going to sit right here and I'm just going to make this turn. I'm just going to run this rep yeah. over and over and I'm over going, and over again. I'm on my right side up this thing the whole yep. time. Because, dude, yep. when you're like in a situation through the trees or whatever and you're doing something super technical, like something can happen and you do have to go on your right side. And so you oh, better yeah. have prepared and run the reps so that you are somewhat comfortable with it, right? Like there's guys that completely avoid it and then they get stuck in a situation and they go stride their sled or they run into a tree or whatever it is. Like that could have been avoided if you'd ran some more reps and gotten some more practice on your right hand side. Yeah. No, that's, 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 that's good, man. And it is true. Like <laughs> you said, sometimes in the like low consequence positions, you kind of just go and play on your left side because it's a little bit more fun. It's easier. Boom. Right. And then you just, and then you're like, fuck, when it actually comes down to, I need to get on my right side. It's like, man, I haven't really been on my yep. right side today too much. And now it's, yep. now I'm going to get surprised and it's not going to be good. Right. Yeah. hundred percent. I guess uh, one last thing you guys, yep. uh, you guys been having good, uh, good luck with your A-arms or what are you players riders breaking your A-arms all the time? Uh, so for me, dude, like I, I have a lot of friends that have stock A-arms. I actually have aftermarket skins. 
um, yeah. the free flow front end. And I have not busted a single one of those yet. Um, actually nice. fortunate enough for me for this entire season, dude, the only thing I broke is a titanium eye scratcher. And I know That's dudes perfect. that have blown shocks and like done those really terrible things this season. And, and Hey, I mean, sure. somebody, you know, a troll in the comments can be like, well, you're just not riding hard enough. You're not doing anything crazy oh, enough, which I mean, in my They're opinion, coming. Oh, <laughs> it's all good. Um, you know, in my opinion, I have, T. Smith you know, don't, and he, I just, he stays on the trail guys. You know why he ain't yeah. breaking shit. <laughs> dude yeah something like that um so yeah. you know i i have a lot of friends that have have messed up a arms and i have i mean when i this sled that i'm on before i tore it all apart and put all all these aftermarket i busted the lower uh right a arm by hitting a rock because yep. i was out riding in, in too low a snow um do you bust quite on a few? your right side though that's good it's normally yeah, the left hey, right? a on that people are Hell snapping yeah. off <laughs> <laughs> right right no i 100%. i just kind of joke about it because you know we rode we rode for a long time without, you know, having maybe like one a year or something as a group. And then last year, I think, yeah, last year, man, we went like three, four weeks in a row where somebody would snap an A-arm. Oh, every, every day we went, somebody had broke one. And oh, we yeah. were like, what's going on, man? Like, are they just not <laughs> making these things like strong enough anymore? Because like, I mean, it, and you know, it fucking ruins your day. Like it really oh, just... Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, we were just, yeah, we were in that, we were like pretty much at our turnaround point and I was a side hill and bam, hit a little rock, broke my arm. And it's like, well, now we got to spend the next three hours just getting this broken <laughs> arms, little beast back. Like, it was yeah. like, dang it, dude. Yeah. And I, and like I said, I don't get to go enough days for, sure. you know, it, it really makes me sad because I'm only getting to go four or five times a year. It seems like, you know, yeah. and that just, it sucks, but it's fun. It sounds it's like you just need to keep it. it. Oh, 100 percent. Sounds like you maybe need to keep a spare A arm in your backpack or on your tunnel bag. I know. Huh? I know. But <laughs> a little extra you know how weight. it is. Most of the time it doesn't even happen. Yeah. And so it's like whatever. Yeah. But yeah, I need more weight too. I only weigh like 155, so I could use some more weight hey. on my back probably. Hey, oh, no, one that's last all thing. Good, man. One last yep. thing, actually, because yep. uh how was uh, the avalanche training? Ah, uh, that's was a it? good question, man. Uh yeah, yeah, so it was it was really, really good. Um I went with a, a local buddy of mine here. Um and day one was around Avalanche Rescue. So it was all about geared towards like finding a buried person in an avalanche. Yeah. Um and so really getting familiar with understanding your transceiver and your probes and how to dig properly. Um you know, how to search properly for somebody buried and multiple burials. Like you have two or three people buried at the same time, like what to do in that kind of situation. Um, and it just like really opened my eyes to, to, um, how much there is to all of that. Um, you know, cause an Abbey bag, a transceiver probe shovel, you know, you're 15, $1,800 in there, um, yep. in gear alone. And so you better know how to use it. Um, and so that was like really eye opening, And then, um, the second and third day was the airy level one. Um, so it was a little bit of a refresher on avalanche rescue. And then there was a lot on understanding snow. And so like digging yeah. a snow pit and understanding the layers and stuff, which again, like, you know, I've grown up in snow my entire life, super obsessed with it. And I was amazed at how little I actually understood about how snow works. Um, oh, I so that was really I informative. Um, Dude. And then, um, and then the, the third day and final day, um, was really cool. It was actually all about, um, making a game plan with your group and actually going out in zones and writing. Right. So there was, we were split up into a group. And so there was like four or five of us, five or six of us maybe. Um, and you know, we did the whole trailhead check at the beginning and we pulled up a map. We looked at the, the avalanche forecast for the day. Um, and we talked about certain zones that we were going to ride in certain zones that we absolutely were going to stay away from, do not go over there, all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, just worked our way through all of those zones and stopped throughout the day, talked to everybody, talked to everybody's comfort levels. Like, Hey, we're going to go up in here. Hey, we're going to drop down into this Creek bottom. Are you comfortable with this? Do you need to go? Do we need to find another route around? Um, and so it was just, it was super interesting. Uh, I did a whole podcast on it too with a guy that I went with. And um, I think Jeff and what I are going to go. That? Uh, I think that was 11 with Jordan Bennett. Jordan Bennett. Okay. I'll try yeah, to Jordan listen. Bennett. I can send it to you. I can on Instagram or whatever. Um, cool. It was really good, man. And, and becoming a huge advocate for, you know, spreading that awareness. Um, 
Jeff and I, I don't think we'll pull it off this year, but next year I volunteered um, and donating our time to go to our local avalanche center and film um, one of the courses and, you know, bring those, the teachers onto the podcast and talk about it and just try to spread more awareness, utilizing the social platforms and whatnot. Um, so yeah, it was, it was super beneficial. And I think that anybody good, that is doing backcountry riding needs to do that kind of stuff because these sleds are getting us into some wild areas for sure. Yeah. That's the problem, right? Like I felt like for the majority of our life, it was, it was always like a danger and there was like little parts of it, you know, my uncle and my dad, when I was younger, they got in a couple of little slides and stuff, but the sleds weren't, sure. they weren't putting us quite in the same places that they are now. And today yeah, it really is like. I, I don't know. Do you guys feel like almost everybody around your area and stuff too really does kind of neglect it? Like just neglects the oh, avalanche yeah. training and it, it's all just a bunch of, you know, dudes running around being like, ah, oh, we'll be all right. Like we'll figure yeah. it out kind of shit. But I it's mean, really just, I mean, I couldn't even imagine. I mean, just the, the little slides that we've been in and we've seen, you know, it's just so insane how, how powerful that snow really is. Oh, and dude. like how it's it just crazy. literally just takes your sled, flips it around, buries it. And it was like, that wasn't even shit. Like that was like a two, three feet, you know, breakage on top that slid down yeah. a little, a little mountain, not even a big one. Right. And it's like, sure. or like, you know, my dad and I, we, we have beacons, but I'm like, bruh, if you actually got buried, I would, I mean, I, <laughs> I understand a li like how to follow the beep a little bit, you know, but yeah. like I would, I'm like, it would probably just make me sick to my stomach because I would just be sitting there with the beacon and not even know how to use it. And just, yeah, dude. Yeah, the worst, it's intense. The worst nightmare come true. Yeah, and you've got about 14 minutes to find them. 14? Yeah. Is that what they about to say? Yeah. yeah, yeah, to get to the airway. It's, I mean, and that can go by real quick. You know what I mean? So, yeah, there, there's definitely a lot to it. And, yeah, I mean, for the most part, you know, there's a, a lot of the older generation, I would say, can be stuck in their ways and, all oh, that'll never happen to me. Um, and then you, on the flip side, you've got the young punks, right? Like, I think the the highest number of people that die are, you know, between the ages of, like, 21 and 27 right younger mm -hmm. younger guys that you know full of testosterone and adrenaline and stuff um yeah, and riding, so there's right? there's yeah there's definitely a lot of you know punk kids that are just oh screw it we don't need to do that or oh i forgot to charge my radio it's fine we'll just send it it's all good um there's definitely a, a lot of that and so like i mean it's just important to go to the class and then once you go to the class you know you're responsible to take that information and share it with the guys that you're riding with and i know guys that like have been in avalanches, have lost family members in avalanches. And if you're going to ride with them and if you don't have, you know, a transceiver, if you don't have the proper gear, they ain't going with you. You're going to stay home or go by yourself or something. You know what I mean? So like, um, it does seem a bit drastic, but at the end of the day, like dude, it's just the inevitability of where we're at, where we're riding, where the sleds are taking us. And so like, it's super yep. important to, to be aware of it. So I'm glad you asked. And how much I don't even know, but, the heavier snow, I would imagine, is more dangerous for you guys, or is it kind of not? Uh, I don't know. I mean, so again, like, this is definitely tapping into, like, <laughs> my stock of knowledge is very, very yeah. small. So if, if you guys listening to this know, know the answer to this question better, I mean, definitely comment below. I mean, you definitely see, in my opinion, I think I see way more avalanches happening in Colorado than, like, anywhere else for sure um and so i don't know if like that wet snow bonds a lot better whereas like the sugary snow like is more susceptible to sliding yeah um i, d I don't really know man i mean the the depth of of you know the actual snow conditions is is very deep and i know very little um so yeah. for you guys listening if you do know the answer to that question comment below but um i mean Got i it. definitely hear more about avalanches in montana and colorado than yeah where i'm at yeah that's why i mean i feel like i hear about them a lot more but i was just wondering like um more like uh getting out of it is what i was thinking of just like the heavy of oh, the you yeah. know your west coast like i mean it's like like it's concrete <laughs> yeah i just couldn't imagine being underneath that like oh, you know dude. some of the snow like in wyoming and colorado i'm like i could probably be under that for a second be all right and float yeah. out of it but like that heavy shit is intense yeah. and obviously well, i don't want to be under any snow at all i'm yeah. <laughs> i don't ever want to be under snow <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, well, just... another interesting piece to it too is that like the highest number of deaths that are actually related in an avalanche are actually related to trauma not mm. uh, uh yeah God, what's Makes the word sense. dying of air you know getting hit yeah. by trees and rocks and yeah yeah um asphyxiation i think is the term for it 
So, oh, but yeah, anyways, um, but yeah. Well, cool, man. God damn, we we talked about a ton of good stuff, Bryce. I appreciate you hopping on here. Um, oh, yeah. Definitely going to maintain conversation you. with you um, outside of this. And this episode will actually be um, released this Friday, so in a couple of days here, awesome. we'll put this one out. So, um, and we'll definitely split up the clips and whatnot, and give you all of that in a Dropbox and whatnot, so just so you have the content yourself. Um, and then, so yeah, for all of you guys tuning in, I appreciate you guys being here, whether you're on, you know, Spotify or you're watching this on YouTube channel, please, you know, subscribe, notification button, leave comments below. Definitely answer Bryce's question for the sled talk question of the day. Um, and as always, tune in because we're releasing these episodes every single Friday at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So, Bryce, again, I appreciate you jumping on. Thank you for taking the time, dude. No, man, thank you so much. Uh, I just want to say, you know, kudos to you guys for starting the podcast you know you guys are doing an amazing job with the whole marketing and everything else and you know obviously shit's always slow at the beginning and there's not gonna there's not the most people snowmobiling right but keep yeah. at it man you guys you guys have made me really excited in the last couple months ever since i came across your page so uh, yeah. i really appreciate, appreciate what you guys that. are doing because it's hard to find you know solid content around some of the, the things we love most Totally. I appreciate that, man. That means a ton. So, yeah, we will. Uh, thanks, guys, for tuning in, and we'll uh, see you on the next episode. Living life with no regrets. I can't design when I get dressed. Summertime, I'm winter fresh. I put a leg behind her head. Night, night, she gone to bed. Bye-bye. Every day, it's a new test. I just keep chasing these chicks.